Hello everyone! Welcome to the third video in our Skin Gen Masterclass series for Character Creator and the newest high-quality texture enhancement tools. Today, I'm going to summarize the most important aspects of the clothing creation process that I use for this semi-realistic demon we've been making. Today, we'll use ZBrush and Maya to make the geometry of the outfit and Substance Painter for the final texturing that you can see here. This video is going to be pretty chill. We're going to breeze right through this. I'm basically showing you a high-level overview how you could get your character ready for the next steps, but there are tons of different ways to do this. Links to the previous videos are in the description if you need a refresher. So, let's just get to it. Most of the work in ZBrush will be with the body in high resolution. We're going to start by sort of blocking out the outfit we're looking for. In this case, I'm doing something inspired by Roman or Greek culture. We make a mask on the body to generate a shoulder pad. Then we use Extract and we delete the interfaces. We hit Z Remesure and shape it a bit with the Move Brush. And now we make a couple duplicates of the same piece to give it a little more volume and improve the appearance just a little bit. I also put a couple rings on the edges. That's where we're going to attach our chest straps. To make the chest straps, we use the Curve Strap Brush and we finesse it a little bit with the Move Brush. And what's a belt but a cylinder you wear, if you think about it? Let's just size one up. Uh, tighten it a bit, and let's add some fabrics to the arms. We're going to hit Insert and place a plane on the scene. Then we scale the plane up to match the proportion and position of the demon guy here. And with the help of masks, I put the corners of the plane close to the shoulders and then mask them again. Then from the Dynamics menu, we run a fabric simulation. This helps us make the clothes, you know, with natural wrinkles. To add the finer details, we can use the cloth hook brush, but there are tons of settings in the fabric sim to get you most of the way there if you play around with them a little bit. Dynamic subdivision makes sure that everything looks nice and high quality as it's kind of simulating around. From here, it's more of the same. We're using basic geometry in the areas that we want to have an accessory. On the arms, on the waist, the legs and the shoes. We're using the same method of generating geometry with masks for both solid objects and for fabric simulation. Here's a pro tip incoming. When you're working in high resolution, you want to damage the surface of an object a little just to make it look a bit more real. You can use brushes or alphas. There's a ton of different distressed or damaged brushes free on the internet. Just Google it and you'll find a ton. With six or seven subdivisions, we can go about adding imperfections such as dents or cut lines. Those look better on an object with a hard surface, like on this shoulder pad. I mean, it's armor, it's probably seen some battle action. You can do the same thing, but with less intensity for fabrics or leathers, harder fabrics. Stuff where the scuffs are less sharp. This took me a few hours of patience and fun. You just gotta play some music and enjoy the process. Uh, and my guy looks like this. For the retopology and UV unwrap, I'm a Maya kinda guy. One point of the process that I want to highlight is that we can take maximum advantage of all the UV space by making seams along the edges, just like they would be in regular clothes. Likewise, we can separate the accessories uh, depending on where they are positioned. That is, the shoulder pad should be separated from the cape, and in turn the belt. We also have the leg and shoe protectors separate in their own UVs. You can take advantage of the UDIM to separate objects that are symmetrical, like in this case. And the next step is to cook our maps in high resolution. There's a lot of tools that can do this, but I'm a substance painter kind of guy. I do each object individually, so I have more control over the normal maps and occlusion maps, because sometimes they don't get projected correctly when the geometry is just a little bit too close together. Once that's done, let's import our objects to Character Creator. 
Once everything's positioned, we just transfer some skin weights and we can take our whole model for texturing. I just use the default skin weight. Another important thing actually is to make sure that your materials are named properly and identifiably. Now we select the objects and select export character to Substance Painter. We give our file somewhere to live and we export. In Substance, we're gonna make a new project. We're gonna select the file we just exported and we're gonna keep the UV tile box uh, deactivated because we don't need that in this case. Then just add all the baked maps. Now we just gotta add some textures to our meshes. We can add some leather materials, we can add some rough surfaces, we can add metals, just something to bring our armor to life. To export the textures, we go to the File menu, and we check only the boxes of the textured objects we were just working on. We add a resolution, I'm going 4K. In CC3, we just import each map individually to its corresponding material and double check that the normals aren't flipped. And we can do things like make sure our colors aren't displaying weird or something. Just make sure it looks good. So as you can see, it's not hard to make a cool looking character. You just need a little patience and you need observational skills to build things up and make them interesting and really high quality. That's all for now. Come on back for the next video where we do our finishing touches. Thanks for watching.